In this video, we're going to look at why light therapy has been utilized for thousands of years for its therapeutic effects. I'm going to explain why red and near infrared light in particular has received a whole lot of scientific attention in the past few decades and how it's being used in specialized LED light panels such as these to impart incredible health benefits. Just a quick disclaimer, all the information on this channel is academically sourced, but is meant for educational purposes only. So please don't use it to treat or diagnose any existing or pre-existing health conditions. Always consult with your healthcare provider first. With that out the way, let's begin. Red light therapy, also known in the past as low level light therapy, and nowadays as photobiomodulation, has been researched for more than 50 years, and thousands of academic studies have proved its diverse range of therapeutic effects. However, light or phototherapy using natural sunlight has actually been around for thousands of years. The ancient Egyptians called it heliotherapy. Hippocrates, the famous ancient Greek physician, was known to prescribe frequent light exposure to depressive patients. He believed that the Greeks were happier and more optimistic than the more northern European populations due to their high exposure to light from the sun. And he was right. Modern day scientists have simply isolated the specific light frequencies that have healing properties. The red and near infrared light used in photobiomodulation is just a band of light frequencies within the broad spectrum of light that the sun emits. We can identify these frequencies most clearly at sunrise and sunset by the reddish color of the sky at these times. Later in this video, I'll explain the reasons for which photobiomodulation researchers have isolated these frequencies and why companies are now producing red light therapy devices for home use, such as these ones here. Now, to get a good grasp of light therapy, we need to first understand basic human energy production. Let me explain. All living things require energy to survive. Duh. In the human body, this energy is in the form of adenosine triphosphate, or ATP for short. Adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, is a complex organic chemical that provides energy to drive many processes in living cells. It is produced in the mitochondria, which are the energy units of cells. We can stimulate the body to produce more mitochondria through regular physical exercise and subsequently have more potential energy at our disposal at any given time. And the more mitochondria we have, the more energy we can produce. This is why elite athletes have been found to have a greater density of mitochondria in their muscle tissues than the average person. This adaptation happens because of the energy demands they place on their bodies day in and day out, resulting in their bodies producing more mitochondria. This is one of the major metabolic benefits of exercise and why it's promoted across the board in the health and medical fields. However, this adaptation takes a long time and a lot of dedication on our part. So is there another way for the body to make more energy that doesn't require so much hard work? Well, fortunately there is. Instead of trying to produce more and more mitochondria by exercising day and night, we could also make sure that the mitochondria we have already are functioning optimally. This is where red and the infrared light comes into the picture. Newton's law of the conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but can only change its form. We know that this is true for solar energy, whereby light energy from the sun is absorbed through solar panels to produce electrical energy. We also know that sunlight is transformed into energy by plants in the process of photosynthesis. Well, it turns out that the human cells are pretty similar in this regard. This is because when our cells absorb light energy, it sparks off a chemical reaction in the mitochondria to produce more ATP, which is our usable form of energy. So again, in the same way that solar energy can be converted into electrical energy, so can light energy be used by our cells to produce more ATP. Great. So what makes red and the infrared light in particular so special then? Well, red and the infrared light has a light frequency range of 600 to 1,100 nanometers. It just so happens that these frequencies transmit really well through our body tissues and into cells. So whereas other light frequency lengths such as blue light fall short and can only enter into the first layer of the skin, Red and especially near-infrared light can penetrate through all the layers of the skin and reach into our organs and even into bones, where they can activate our cells to produce more ATP, as explained earlier. Dr. Michael Hamlin, the leading researcher on red light therapy, who has over 400 published papers to his name, explained this quite practically in an interview once. Take out your torch and shine it under a finger or the thumb. Now, if you look from the top, notice how red glow can be seen. This is because only the red light frequencies are passing through the entire depth of our finger. 
only the red light has the ability to penetrate deep into the body's tissues. Now, increasing ATP production inside our cells via photobiomodulation is super important. One needs to realize that this energy is not only used to keep us awake and feeling energetic, but the ATP is a universal fuel inside all living cells, which drive every single biological process. We need to not only survive, but to thrive as well. Furthermore, it has now been discovered that ATP is also used as a signaling molecule that our cells use to communicate with each other. So if new cells need to be made to grow or heal a bone, for example, ATP is used to communicate with fibroblasts to initiate the bone remodeling process. Or let's say there are damaged, defective or infected cells. These ATP signaling molecules communicate with macrophages to clean up the mess by engulfing and destroying the bad cells. How about when viruses enter our body? Again, ATP signaling molecules can call upon killer T cells and the like to destroy the pathogen. But hang on, what when our immune systems are overactive and behaving irrationally, as in the case of autoimmune diseases? Well, communication to these cells to stop what they're doing and induce an anti-inflammatory response is also a possibility with better signaling. There are even studies that prove that activating ATP production through red and infrared light in one area of the body can have peripheral effects elsewhere. For example, in one study, the researchers used red light therapy to treat hyperpigmentation called melesma in women. However, they only shone the light on one side of the face. By the end of the study, there were massive improvements to the skin's complexion on the treatment side, but the no treatment side also showed improvement. This is called the bystander effect, and it demonstrates that red and infrared light therapy has far reaching systemic effects on the body through enhanced ATP molecular signaling. Additionally, the increased energy production of these red light stimulated cells results in a higher uptake of oxygen. The increased oxygen utilization causes some oxidative stress to the cell via the production of reactive oxygen species. Now, I know this sounds like a negative. I mean, why would we want our cells to be stressed? But in fact, a small amount of oxidative stress is actually well tolerated by the cell because it stimulates the production of antioxidants to protect the cells. So it ends up being a therapeutic benefit in the end. It's like when we stress our bodies and muscles during exercise and they respond by becoming stronger and more adapted to the exercise induced stress. So with all this in mind, it has been shown that cells that have been photo activated by red and neo infrared light will react in at least one of the following three ways, depending on the state they are in before the exposure to the light. Number one, cells will repair themselves or self destruct if they are damaged at the time after exposure Two. The primary functions of the cell will be upregulated through the higher turnover of ATP. And three, if cell counts are low in the area of light exposure, new cells will migrate to that area or be stimulated to grow. This might also happen systemically through the bystander effect. Now I know what you may be thinking. It almost sounds too good to be true, right? Well, LED red light therapy is not some magic cure for everything. However, these spectrums of light are a natural component of our everyday lives in the form of sunlight, which are proving to be highly beneficial for many cellular functions. Personally, I'm a firm believer that the most consistent factors that our lifestyle is made up of probably have the biggest impact on our health. These include nutrition, sleep, physical movement, breathing, and light exposure. One could call these the pillars or fundamental elements of health. For these reasons, photobiomodulation in the form of red and infrared light therapy is being used in many different kinds of therapies now. Some examples are to promote hair growth. This was actually the reason for which the field of photobiomodulation came into being. In 1968, Dr. Andre Meester conducted an experiment using a ruby laser emitting red light on induced tumor cells in mice. Even though the experiment at the time was a failure, he did notice that the hair around the area that had been exposed to the ruby laser grew remarkably fast. From there, the studies on photobiomodulation really took off. We now have proof of its effectiveness in skin care, diabetes, Alzheimer's, sports and exercise performance, sleep, traumatic brain injury, recovery, wound healing, and much more. We also have much cheaper ways of gaining photobiomodulatory benefits from red light therapy devices as opposed to lasers. We will be covering many of these topics in depth over the next few weeks. 
as well as reviewing the products themselves. So subscribe and hit the notification bell to be alerted when we do. But if you want to check the products out in the meantime, the links to the ones we are currently testing can be found down below in the description. And that's it from us today. Please like and share this video if you found it useful. This engagement really helps us to improve our reach here on YouTube. Anyways, thanks for watching and until next time, keep on exercising your health. Cheers.